Hey, how y'all doing? I want to give a little update to the Jade Helm. Now, what we should understand here, hopefully, maybe somebody's brought this up before. This document is not a new document. This document goes all the way back to 1997. As you see, this logo right here is the Air Force Research Laboratory. So the Air, Air Force Research Laboratory has this document with their stamp on it and their logo. You can also see this is sponsored by DARPA. And DARPA has a lot of crazy stuff, robotics and whatnot. Um, so they, they really develop a lot of high technology for the military. So what we need to do is, is really think about what we're being told when we look at this document. See, it's been reviewed by the Air Force Research Laboratory. There is Caroli's approval. Mr. Talbert, the director. And these are the three main ones here. Alice Mulvihill, Clinton Hyde, and Dave Rager. The effective date of the contract was July of 97. So this will be the this will be 18 years come the 28th of July. Contract expired January 31st, 2001. This is the short title, Jade. Period of work covered, 9701. Research was supported by DARPA. As you can see, the report date is August 2001. We have it here, final January 97, January of 01. Title, subtitle right here. BBN Technologies right here. So when we read through this, <clears throat> take take careful note of the of the words and the and the and the potential meanings of what they're actually saying here. It says, Jade is a knowledge-based mixed initiative system that supports force deployment planning and management. It is a knowledge-based mixed initiative. Jade uses case-based generative planning methods to support the development of large-scale, complex deployment plans in minimal time. The development of big, large-scale, complex means there's a lot of elements to, to this deployment and what's what it's for, what they're using, what's, what's the goal, in the shortest amount of time. They incorporate the technology of three tools. Prodigy and analogy, a combined case-based and generative planner developed by Carnegie Mellon University. Format, force management, an analysis tool that supports case-based force deployment planning developed by BBN Technologies and PARCA, a highly indexed knowledge-based management system developed by the University of Maryland. With Jade, a military planner can build a preliminary force deployment plan including the time-phased force deployment data in less than one hour. 
So it's telling you with this jade, a planner can make a game plan in less than an hour. Okay, guys, this is our game plan. This is what we're going to do. This is this is this is putting together all the information to cover all the bases to come out with the highest percentage of the most successful type of of plan. The speed in the plan construction is possible because Jade supports the rapid retrieval and reuse of previous plan elements for use in the development of new plans. In addition, Jade employs an easy-to-use, map-oriented, drag-and-drop interface where force modules and previous plans whose force capabilities and composition match the requirements of the current situation can be dragged from the case library and dropped onto a geographic destination. Plan modifications and adaptation is supported through remindings each time that a force module is created or copied into a plan. The user is automatically reminded of the need for geographical changes. <clears throat> After putting a lot of thought into this and rereading it a, a lot, I don't know why, but for some reason I keep getting the Tom Cruise movie Minority Report popping into my head. Where they had um, all this data on their holographic computer systems, and they would pull up the data of Joe Blow, who supposedly committed a crime in such and such year, at such and such place, at such and such time. Remember? And then they go back prior to all this stuff that this knowledge said that this person did or would do at this point in time. And then they go back and get this guy or whoever it was before they actually did what they did. But they would still take them and charge them. I don't know why it reminds me of that, but it does. It's, it's knowledge-based. It's what it says. They're taking all the the possible data, and they're making a there's a a brain somewhere a, a supercomputer for them, and they're making a model of a scenario, and the computer is putting together their battle plan, their staging areas, what type of weaponry they're going to need, how they should instigate how they should respond etc all, all these variables so when this occurs in the dates as they said July through September there's that month of September again I am not um, I'm not believing that they're going to actually round people up, the so-called political dissidents. I am believing that they're practicing for a future time, not too far off. Now, it is not going to fly with the American people to just drop this down when that time comes and, and start going and and getting people or just declare martial law with nothing that there's no reason there's no excuse given why now they've already said we're going to practice over here in the states but it's actually for something that we would use overseas but i've never heard an answer to the question of where are you talking about overseas or what are you talking about? You you failed over there in Syria when you you tried to flip Assad out so you could get control of Syria, and the Russians stepped in the way and said, "No, nah, we got the goods on you. That you guys are the ones that actually, you know, your mercenaries are actually the ones that that 
did to chemical weapons. And that put an end to them even contemplating you know, sending missiles and stuff over there and going in with, say, ground forces. And then they tried to, in Ukraine. They tried to, to do regime change. They fomented unrest. They got everything riled up. And then Russia stepped in again. So Russia has been a thorn in their ass in two different instances. And thereby, that is why with the cooperation of Saudi Arabia and the United States together and probably some other unnamed people we don't know of yet, countries, that is why they collapsed, for the most part, domestic grilling over here. And so many oil rigs were shuttered. The Saudis flooded the market with the, with the oil to depress the price of the oil, which is how Russia makes a, a large part of their money to run their country. The sale of oil. They tried to destroy their economy and collapse it. It was intentionally done. It was a plan. So, when they say we would do this stuff over somewhere not in America, where are they talking about? Who you know? Who are you talking about? You're going to do this stuff too with your. To me, it would be mercenaries because you remember what Obama said. He said, "We need another type of a military force." Not, not. He wasn't speaking of our conventional known military, Air Force, Army, Marines, Navy. He said whatever it would be needed to be just as well armed, just as well trained, just as well funded, and just as large. Well what are you talking about? You don't you don't have you can't, you know where's the recruitment offices for that? So you got to be thinking about who is that force. It could be things that has been made like Al Qaeda, Taliban. It could be ISIS, or it could be an unnamed outfit that's just a, a large group of mercenaries. You know, they're they're totally in the black, black ops, not spoken of, not talked about, unknown to the public for the most part. But they have not said. They've not said, well, we're going to use this in uh, Afghanistan or Iraq. They didn't say that. Where? So, that takes us back over here. <clears throat> what type of scenario would it take for this to be used over here? To actually uh, see these this rapid force deployment, this rapid force deployed and carrying out their strategy to perform and fulfill their mission, whatever they've been given. Now, I still say a lot of it would be. Um, Financial collapse. You just can't keep going trillions and trillions in debt year after year after year after year. You can't do it. They can keep this propped up. But sooner or later, you got to pay the piper. Sooner or later, you got to pay. It's either pay or pull the plug and let the house of cards fall to the ground. So I say to you, what if you had 5,000 bucks in the bank in your checking account? And, you know, it probably actually has, 5,000 would probably have the actual purchase power, maybe, of about 4,000. If you got 5,000, you can buy purchase power of four, 
you go to bed one night and you wake up the next day and you're 5,000 bucks and had probably the actual purchasing power of 4,000 bucks is now only got the purchasing power of 50 bucks. So your 5,000 bucks is actually equal to 50 bucks. How will you react? How will that make you feel? What, what would you do then? What do you think all Americans would do then? You think they'd take it sitting down, lying down? You think they'd be casual about it? I don't think so. I think you'd see a lot of trying to survive. You don't have the, the, the purchasing power. Most Americans wouldn't. Your upper level, your way upper level of people would still be able to to do things. But everyone else will be trying to have something to drink, something to eat, you know, and a place to stay. If you take medications you'd, for an illness, you'd be still trying to have them. And when you had nothing to buy it with and had any purchase power, you're going to probably try to get it some other way, huh? You know what I'm saying? And to have reactionary force plans and deployments like this would be a way to help, in their eyes, to help them, not you, but to help them keep control, maintain control, maintain order, create order from the chaos. And you know that scenario has got to be true. Because you can't run your household like the government runs their household. You know you can't. If you make 50000 bucks a year, but you're spending 100000 bucks a year, you're gone and in big-time debt. And sooner or later, you get to where you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and then finally you can't even rob Peter to pay Paul. If you're trying to find somebody else to rob to pay Peter, and it just keeps going. And sooner or later, you go to the banker and say, hey, I'm in trouble, man. I need, I need to take out a loan to pay all these debts off. So they go ahead and do you a, a refinance or something. You know, pay all your debts off for you and make one, one loan. With, you know, it's going to have a bigger payment, but all your stuff's current then. It's been brought up to date. But then you're so far in debt, you're even having problems paying that new loan that paid you up to date. And finally, you can't do that. And you go back in, same thing. They bail you out, make you a new loan, catch you back up, but the payment's even a little more. Finally, you can't do it. You go back again. The bank then says, we've done all we can for you, but we can't do no more. And then you're out of options. You're bankrupt. You can't pay. The same way is with the government. It's they can prop up the stocks, the investments, all they want to, for as long as they can. But sooner or later, just like a banker, they're gonna say, This is over. It's time. And you know it has to come. You know it has to come. It's written in the scripture. There is going to be one world currency. We don't have that now. Well, there's got to be some, some type of worldwide something, some type of initiative that brings everybody on the same currency, same trading ability, the same whatever it's going to turn out to be. So I ask you to really give thought to the way things were. Not the way things actually are, because things are so screwed up now. It's, it's absolutely pathetic when you get down to the nuts and bolts of things and the brass tacks. I mean, 
if we start out with the Creator, then He sets down precedence. He instructs us. I have made man. I made woman for man. There was a reason for that. That is a set natural order prescribed in the beginning of how unions should be. Okay? You go later farther down the line. There's a set prescribed day of worship. Okay, you go farther down the line. Then there is a set prescribed amount of years to go by, and it's called a Shemitah and a Jubilee. And we're in the Shemitah now, and that month of September is the end of it and the beginning of the Jubilee. So, it doesn't have to be that way all the time, but I ask you to be honest with yourself and in your thinking. You have God watching everything. He is either pleased or disappointed. And when he's pleased, he rewards and blesses. When he's disappointed, he doesn't reward and bless. He has to, to do something to try and turn people around, and get them back on the right track of where they, they should be, what is best for them that leads eventually to entrance into his kingdom. So do you think that America, speaking strictly of our country, America, do you think that he is disappointed in our country? Do you think that with the amount of helpless little unborn souls that have been murdered in the form of abortion, that he would reward our country or be disappointed and punish our country by shaking things up to try and get our attention, try and turn us away from these evil ways. Do you think that since he prescribed the natural order of the Union, between man and woman, and the first two people that were ever made, it wasn't two men and it wasn't two women. It was a man and a woman. Seeing as what's going on now with same-sex marriage, homosexuality, how it's grown, how the Supreme Court is very likely to decide that it's the law of the land. You've got to let them marry each other. Do you think that he would be pleased and bless our country or disappointed and unhappy about our choices and punish or shake up our country to try and get us to do right? You see what I'm getting at? In what ways do you think the Almighty would be pleased with the things going on in our country that he would continue to bless this nation? Or in what ways do you think that he would be unhappy with? And finally, we've reached a line that we went over and crossed to where he can no longer do that. 
where he, he finally has to do something before it's too late. And I believe that some type of financial downturn is going to be one way. Because when that happens, it, it's like a spider web, like I said, we're all linked together now. Yay, one for all, all for one. All our economies are tied together like a domino. So when one of them gets seriously screwed, it affects all of them. But where the screwing's happening, it hurts the worst, usually, which would be here. There are different scenarios that this particular jade tool could be used upon. Some would be possibility of earthquakes. Um, the New Madrid, I still believe, is going to crack at some point. Something is going to make that baby crack. I don't know if it's going to do it on its own. And that goes for California and the San Andreas Fault also. Let's just hope that what, if something like that were to happen, it would be just on their own. Because if it's another trigger, let's just hope it's not Yellowstone. Because we would be so seriously screwed if that thing went off on us. That would pain the whole world, but we would get the major, major hurting put on us by that thing. And I'm pretty, pretty sure that if that baby popped, it probably would lead to some very serious monster earthquakes in the zone that I've mentioned. And I am suspecting there's also another very, very possible scenario of EMP, electromagnetic pulse. Or they could say it was, and they could just turn the power off. And people don't have any power, it's the same type of chaos. So there are different scenarios, and as it said, this is a knowledge-based mixed initiative system. So all these scenarios are incorporated into this big giant brain, this, this computer, this modeling, no matter what the situation calls for, it's got a plan on how to deploy, manage very rapidly. So how many of you knew that Jade had been around for quite this long? Well, it has. When we look at the map here, we see these states. And we want to say, why these states? You know, why not all this part of the East Coast over here, you know? Carolinas and all this stuff over here, you know, how about uh, we get some Alabama going? And how, hey, let's get it up here in D.C. Why over here? And, um, you know, the Reds are supposed to be the hostile territories, according to them. And I'm not so sure I've got a real answer for that. <clears throat> One coast area ought to be as good as the other coast area, huh? But, um, you know, this is all water out here. So, you know, you could potentially have 
naval forces out here in this water. But you could you could do the same thing over here in the Gulf if you if you wanted to do stuff over here. So I'm not exactly sure why they've chosen these this area. I'm gonna have to put some more time and thought into into that. You know, I'm not sure if it's because there's good strong militia out there. You got a plan you know, if you, these these areas would be responding pretty good if, you know, when the time comes. But like I said, this is a knowledge base deal. Meaning, when they do this practice stuff, they're going to be taking down everything, every reaction that anybody has. If anybody's watching, seeing what they're doing, or somebody is seeing what these people are doing when they see what they see, are they how are they reacting? Are they coming over and saying, hey, what the hell are you doing? Are they standing there and watching and filming it on their phone? Have they took their phone out and then popped it open and all of a sudden starting to make a call? Or are they just standing there doing nothing? Or they, did they even come out of their house? Did they come out of their house with a weapon? All these things is data and knowledge. Make no mistake, every one of you, myself included, we got a file. Oh, yeah, we got a file. And that file is smart TVs, they can see you and they can hear you. And it does record what is seen and heard. They got everything you said on your phone, your conversations, your text messages. Uh, your downloads, your likes, your posts, they got your YouTube, your comments, your videos uploaded, your videos watched, what you liked, you know, they got your Twitter, they got your Facebook, all of every single piece of information that you've ever done on anything like those. It's all kept. It's all about you. It's all about the, that individual. And through whatever it is determined, through all that stuff they kept on us, there's been some type of a, a grade, some type of a label or something attached to each individual as to maybe kind of a threat risk so to speak. And when the time does come where they might maybe do some rounding up of people, it'll be those people that they determine that are the highest threat risks, I believe. Because they did not put from 1997 until now 18 years worth of time and effort into this program for no reason. And when DARPA is involved, you can make book that it's going to be something that they are going to use. So this is the update that I wanted to I wanted to give everybody. I've got something I'm working on about the month of September coming up. <clears throat> My thoughts on that from what I've been thinking about. So for now, I'm going to leave this for you to think about because you really should. And uh, pray for our nation to turn away from the evil that they do. We have to pray even for our, our crappy leaders, our crappy Senate, 
our House of Representatives, our local leaders in our towns, in our states. Because they can always change. In the power of prayer, God can can touch them and and help them to see things differently and be different and change for the better. The problem is, as we're in these end times, more and more evil is coming. And if you didn't already know, you should know. The closer you get to God, the closer you you hunker down to Jesus, the harder the evil is going to try and, and come at you. Because they really get off. E evil spirits really get off on taking someone away. Christ you know they they like that that is supreme for them because then they can say hey I, I took away one that you already had you know that's not the same as taking away one that was say an atheist that, that he didn't have yet so just stay in the faith Pray for the world. Time is coming. Things are going to radically, seriously change. I'll talk to you all soon.